Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Marco, for that song. Sound a few difficulties here. Welcome, church. My name is Elder Mark. Um, I pray that uh, you all had a blessed Christmas, a blessed holiday season. And uh, let us bow our heads and pray as we open the God, word of God together. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, that I have the opportunity to share your word. Thank you for giving me the word that you want to share with your people today. Hide me behind the cross, Father God, and let your light of your truth shine forth. I ask all of these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. As it has been mentioned before, that 2020 has been... Am I sharing my screen? Yes, I am. 2020 has been one of those years. And I've only been on this planet for 52 of those years, but I can tell you that this last year has been a year unlike no other. You know, we started off the year with this coronavirus pandemic, and that pandemic is still raging along. As of December 24th, there have been 2 million cases in California alone, and 23,944 deaths. In total, in the U.S., there's been 18.7 million cases reported, and 329,000 people have lost their lives to coronavirus. As we progressed through the year, we had social unrest in the form of Black Lives Matter protests, which was sparked by the shooting of George Floyd in Minneapolis by the Minneapolis Peace Department. And that sparked off major social unrest in every city in the United States. As we progressed through the year in California, we had wildfires up and down the state. Um, There's 33 deaths, a total of 9,279 fires that were raging in the state alone and 4,359,517 acres were destroyed. And that, if that wasn't enough, we progressed through the year to the elections, which sparked a lot of contention, which sparked a lot of, again, unrest, political upheaval. And these are just kind of the major highlights of this year, it's just been one of those years of change, unrest, anxiety, fear, and pain. But God says, I am ready, willing, and able to save all of those who come to me through my son, Jesus Christ. Let us turn in our Bibles to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, and God is ready to save. And he says in his word, I will put enmity, in other words, open hostility between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall fatally bruise your head, and you shall only bruise his heel. This is God speaking to the serpent in the Garden of Eden. So I wanted to come and tell you today that God is ready to save. This pen of inspiration, Desire of Ages, page 115. And it reads, since the announcement to the serpent in Eden, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed Satan knows that he did not hold absolute sway over the world. There was seen in men the working of a power that would stood his dominion. With intense interest, he watched the sacrifices offered by Adam and his sons. In these ceremonies, he discerned a symbol of communion between earth and heaven. He set himself to intercept this communion. 
He misrepresented God and misrepresented the rights that pointed to the Savior. Men were led to fear God as one who delighted in their destruction. Their sacrifices that should have revealed his love were offered only to appease his wrath. Satan excited the evil passions of men in order to fasten his rule upon them. When God written word was given, Satan studied the prophecies of the Savior's advent. From generation to generation, he worked to blind the people to these prophecies that they might reject Christ at his coming. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that Jesus volunteered. I want to tell you that don't let Satan blind you to the truth presented in God's word. God loves you. He has already provided salvation for all mankind from eternity past to eternity future. Let's go to the end of the Bible. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. Again, God is ready to save. And this is in the context of the beast and the earth who are wandering after the beast. We're seeing this starting to happen now as we look in the world events. But God's word says, all who dwell on the earth will worship him, meaning the beast whose names have not been written in the book of life of the lame, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. I want you to focus in on the fact that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. That even before sin came in, God was ready to save. Amen? Amen. Another point that I want to make is I want to, uh, from eternity past, it's the pen of inspiration. The plan of salvation has been laid before the creation of the earth. For Christ is the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Yet it was a struggle with the king of the universe to yield up his son to die for the guilty race. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, the mystery of redemption, the love of God for a world that did not love him. This is taken from eternity past, page 31. So even before man sinned, God was ready to save. God is willing. We turn our book to, we turn our Bibles to Mark chapter 1, verse 41, 40 and verse 41. And this is an example where Jesus is willing to save. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus moved with compassion stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. This is just one example of the fact that our Lord is willing to save us if we are willing to reach out to him and willing to ask him. Amen. Another verse in our Bible, let's turn to 2 Peter, verse 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 9. And this is another example in the Word of God where God is willing to save us. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Again, this is in the negative, not willing, but Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's the reason why our Lord has not returned, because he is long suffering toward us. He wants 
as many of his creation, mankind, to be saved and come to the grand communion table in heaven. Amen. Let us look at the pen of inspiration. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. He does not forget or neglect his children, but he permits the wicked to reveal their true character that none who desire to do his will may be deceived concerning them. He again, again, the righteous are placed in the furnace of affliction that they themselves may be purified, that their example may convince others of the reality of faith and godliness, and also their consistent course may condemn the ungodly and the unbelieving. So we have a part to play, brothers and sisters, in this great controversy, that we should reflect the, the love of God, that we should reflect the righteousness of Christ, that we should reflect his character, so that those who are the accuser of the brethren can say that they were put through all these things, but yet they still serve the Lord. Amen? How we exercise our faith is important to God in his plan of redemption. God is able. Amen. We sing that song, He is able. That's one of my favorite songs. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 22 to 27. And God's word reads, and I'm going to take my time with this because there's so much theology in this passage. By so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Also, there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. Let me just stop right here and give some PowerPoints. Jesus has paid the debt for sin to establish a better covenant based on better promises. If you remember in the Old Testament, the Lord gave his law to the people and then the people gave an oath to the Lord and said, everything you tell us we will do. But we know they failed over and over and over, just like we fell over and over and over. But Jesus came and lived a sinless life as a man, as one of us, but he was also God. And so he is our example. And so because he did the Father's will perfectly and he died for our sins on the cross and he was raised up to be an ever living intercessor for us. So he is the high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. If you remember, the, the order in the Bible was the order of the Aaronic priesthood. But Jesus is a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, which is a much higher priesthood. That's why he can be a surety of a better covenant, because he paid the price for you and me. Jesus lives forever and his priesthood is forever. Let me continue reading the scripture. For such a high priest was fitting for us who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and becomes and has become higher than the heavens. Who does not need the daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices for his own sins and then for the people's. For he did it once for all when he offered up himself. You know, this is another mystery of God that he came and offered up himself in, in his son Jesus Christ for to pay for our sins. And so that's why he does it all. That's why the new covenant is on for better promises because. God does everything for us. Amen. We just have to accept the gift. 
Jesus' perfect, spotless, and holy sacrifice was offered once for all. It is finished. He paid the price. He was the lamb without spot or without wrinkle who paid the price for our sins. Amen. And so that's why we can come to Jesus because he ever lives to make intercession for us. When we fall and fail as Christians, we can go to him and confess our sins. And he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. So let me touch upon the priestly qualities of our Lord. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 17 says, Jesus is merciful and faithful high priest. Therefore, in all things he had made, he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the things pertaining to God to make a propitiation for the sins of the people. Amen. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 says that Jesus was in all points tempted as we are, meaning that he was both man and he was also God, that his divinity was shrouded in humanity. And so he was in all points tempted as we are. That's why we have a risen Savior that can identify with us. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Amen. That's why Jesus can be a propitiation for our sins, because he was without sin. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 2 says that Jesus has compassion on us. And the Bible reads, he can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weaknesses. Amen. The Lord has compassion on us. That's why we should never be afraid to go to Christ, because he has compassion on us. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our struggles that we go through. We just have to be honest with ourselves and go to him and pray about those struggles. Amen. Point number four, Jesus is sovereign over us. Hebrews chapter three, verse six reads, but Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are if we hold fast to the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. Amen, Jesus is sovereign over his church. That should be good news for us if we are in the body of Christ. Amen. And the fifth point about the priestly qualities of Christ, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. Jesus intercedes on our behalf before the throne of God. For Christ has not entered the holy places with made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Amen. That's why the judgment is good news, because Jesus is our intercessor. He is our advocate. He's also our attorney, and he's also the judge. Amen. That's why when you are in Christ, the judgment is good news. Praise God. I found this hymn online when I was preparing this sermon. I would just want to read these lines to you. And it's called, A Good Priest is Come. And it says, A good high priest is come, supplying Aaron's place, and taking up his room, dispensing life and grace. The law by Aaron's priesthood came, but grace in chief by Jesus' name. He wants temptations new of every sort and kind that he might succor show to every tempted mind in every point the lamb was tried like us and then for us he died he died but lives again and by the throne he stands there shows how he was slain opening his pierced hands 
of us who have transgressed, our priests abide and please the cause of us who have transgressed his laws. And other priests disclaim the laws offerings too. None but the bleeding lamb, the mighty work can do. He shall have all praise for he has loved, lived and died for me. Brothers and sisters, I wanna tell you, I wanna remind you that God is ready. God is willing and God is able to save all those who come to him. I just wanna give you some practical application that we can make starting today. Whatever you're going through or whatever you're dealing with, know that in your heart that God is for you and not against you. Know that God is ready willing and able to save you out of every sin, out of every temptation, out of every trial, out of everything you go through in life, this life. I want to encourage you to start strengthening your walk with the Lord by doing these three simple things. These three spiritual disciplines I want you to start doing. I want you, number one, pray. Because again, God is ready to hear your prayers. I want you to read God's word, not just study, but read and get to know the Lord, who the Lord is in his word. There's a law that says in the Bible that says, as we behold him, we become changed into his image from glory to glory. So you need to read the word of God. You need to be in the word of God in order for you to be changed into the character of Christ. And then the third one, we need, we need, excuse me, we need to share with others what God is doing for us in our daily lives when the opportunity arises. These three things will strengthen your walk with the Lord. And I want to encourage you as we come to a close of this year that no one knows is going to happen, what's going to happen in the new year. Again, this year has been one of those crazy ups and down years, but praise God. He has saw each one of us through this year. Amen. Know that God is ever ready, that he is ever willing, and that he is a, ever able to come to your aid. All you have to do is ask and believe. And let all God's people say, amen. God has provided his son to be the final atoning sacrifice for all mankind, sin, past, present, and future. God has set his son to be the eternal mediator between himself and man. God loves us and desires us to be with him for eternity. God is ready, God is willing, and God is able to save to the uttermost all those who come to him through Christ Jesus. The questions I have for you are, are you ready to accept God's gift of salvation? Are you willing to tell others of God's gift and goodness? And number three, are you able to endure until the end when Jesus comes in his, with his clouds of angels to gather up his people? I wanna close this message by uh, singing our closing hymn. I think uh, Elder Marco will play that for us. It is hymn number 526, Because He Lives.